Before we get into the rest of the process, I just wanted to give you a little quick rundown on the priming. There was nothing spectacular or anything about this. I just took some of the Steino Res primer. I started with the lighter green. I would have preferred to maybe go with ebony or maybe even a mix of ebony and black, but I use so much of that. I just try to conserve on those. And these fountains are supposed to be lighter anyway. So I'm going to go to the next scene here where we actually have them prime now. That's in that light green. If you wanted to, maybe you do oil washes on these. You could do acrylic washes on these, maybe even weathering powder washes on these. I'm going to try a, a couple different things over on all these different pieces of terrain. In this case, I just wanted to use mostly the primers and some of the Creature Caster Pro Acryl paint. So as we move along here, you could see all I took here... You could have used the ebony primer. I think in this case I used the Creature Caster, I think it's black brown. They're pretty much the same color. Now the the Creature Caster paint, you don't even have to thin it to get it through the airbrush. If you want to thin it down, you just a couple drops of water is all it takes. And ratios, it really doesn't matter. Because like I said, I've shot that stuff through the airbrush without even mixing any water in there at all to thin it down. If I had more ebony primer, I would have used that. And you can see where, where I focused, right? Down in the, the crevices, the, the areas where it just would naturally get more shadow anyway. Now I did take some of this camo green. It's a dark camo green. It's You'll see how it looks, boom, right here. Because I didn't want to necessarily have to paint on the moss or even use some let's say flock to do that I just want to get this impression of this light almost kind of staining green here maybe these fountains have been around a little while you can see they got cracks in them anyways right so I just want to give it a little hint of green a little bit of hint of green in, in addition to the brown then we start to lighten things up a little bit and I basically just took we all have these clamshell blister packs there's all over the place i save a lot of them because i use them as palettes or in this case right here i actually cut out a little bit of a mask for myself the most common stone size i basically you can see and I, all i did was i took some of the i think it's a light sand colored primer and just shot it right over the top you wonder why i'm using multiple colors of primer a couple of reasons first of all there's at least 18 colors of Steinal Res right now. It's that same Steinal Res primer. It's from Badger. I'll throw a little link to a couple other my priming tutorials in the description, so I'll be looking for that. But with something like this, it's a resin piece. You're going to handle it. There is no base to hold on to, and I don't really want to have to... I don't, I'm not going to dull coat this thing because I'm going to have water effects too. So... If I'm painting with primer, I just call it primer painting, basically. And if you watch that other video that I'm going to link to this, you will see the same thing happen in there. Why not use that lighter color primer? It's pretty much the stone color anyways. What if I have six, seven layers of primer instead of one layer of primer and then some paint on it? I can handle this thing. It can take some more rugged handling because uh, terrain kind of gets bounced around. And now you can see both pieces, what they look like. And from here, I'm going to go in with the regular Probacryl, regular Reaper paints, and, and increase some definition. That's all it's about, especially in the, the cracks and crevices and all of the mortar joints. I'll just do that there. We'll take that on next. And it's, it's a quick process, very self-explanatory. Again, I've got, as I was working on these two pieces, I think I had four other pieces of the printed terrain. And actually, I was priming miniatures, too. When I prime stuff, I prime stuff. We're talking hours where I'm priming miniatures, vehicles, and terrain. Heck, monsters, if I've got them, too. So what we'll do is we'll take this now to the regular kind of palette camera setup, and we'll paint this in the usual way, and we're going to do that next. So we've got ourselves a 3D printed fountain. This is from RM Printable Terrain. And it's it's really nifty, you can see. Got a really interesting fountain shape here. We got our little areas where water's gonna go. 
and we've got our steps here, some stones. We've already gone over the pictures of the, uh, the airbrushing process. It's just a quick way to get to here. All right. But now what we want to get to is, uh, here I'm going to show you the other one. There's another one. Same basic idea, just a little different design right here. So we have to make water effects here. And you can see those pictures off to the left hand side. Well, our primary source for that is going to be our gloss heavy gel. We've used this for icicles. We've used it for sculpting flames, hair, waves, you name it. We use this thing for so much stuff. Now, some of these areas here where all the water goes, now that is actually going to be primarily filled with the Green Stuff World UV resin. That's going to take sort of the bulk of it. It's going to bulk that out. And here's our realistic water. This is going to sort of form a little bit of the surface here. Kind of because we don't want to just necessarily use up all of this. And we use this with our snow. And we'll probably be maybe dropping some of this even on top of our water effects. We also want to do some a little bit of weathering here. We're going to use the Green Stuff World leaf cutters. And that is going to be distributed here in our in our water thing and in some of our areas along here. We don't want to weather it too much, right? But just give it some kind of hint that there's all this water has led to maybe some vegetation kind of collecting in some of the crevices there. Now, as you can see, we have some, if we want to have a little spout here, we're going to have to support that. We'll show you how to that. This is going to be more of a sheet, I think, of water coming down, and this will be these maybe individual rivulets of water. We'll see exactly how we want to handle that. Okay. Now, what I've done is, just so we don't have to keep waiting forever, is I've applied the Liquitex Heavy Gel to just some blister packs. That's all this is. I was going to use palette paper, and then I saw these blister packs, and I thought, well, this is good because they're kind of reusable. Now, it takes a little while. This has been a few hours, I would I want to say, at least. Maybe about two and a half hours. And you can see some of the thicker parts. They're still turning clear. This one's a little bit closer to being done. And you can see, just a little bit of a preview here. So you can see what we've got. See, we've got that kind of running water texture. So this will be the surface that people see. And it, it it's just kind of a little bit tacky and sticky. That's what makes this kind of a interesting thing for waterfalls. We're going to use some of the Luke's APS ground cover. We're also going to use this. I think this will be handy for attaching this to our fountain here. Now, I'm going to be experimenting with stuff. I don't know exactly how this is all going to work together because these are some new combinations of materials. So we'll, I'll take you back to the, again, this is your RM printed miniatures. And this is their their latest thing right here, your Fallen City. You obviously let a Kaza Doom, kind of dwarven type of thing going on, right? And you recognize this right here. Check this out. This piece in the front, behind this little scatter terrain piece, that's the one we did in video number one. And we're just going to keep adding to all of this, all these ruins and... Boy, there's some really fun ones, some really fun stuff. Also, some smaller pieces like this one in the front here, the scattered terrain. So what we're going to do now is we are going to just show you how I put the Liquitex Heavy Gel into these containers. <clears throat> we won't actually use it for this one. We'll probably use it for one of the future projects as there's two or three other things I want to use or make waterfalls with or some kind of waterfall effects. Then, once we are got that all done, we're gonna paint this guy up here. Get all of our, all of these little cracks and uh, crevices between the stones. We're gonna hit those. We'll weather it, and then the last thing we'll do is our various water effects. And we're gonna get onto that right now. Now, this first step is not super complex, but it does. It requires a little bit of thought 
a little bit of strategy. Now I've been using this flat brush here, so I'm gonna and I want to make sure that I've got just water here. Let's get some. Make sure this is a little bit softer because the that's ah, better. It's the the Liquitex heavy gel will dry even though you wash it pretty well. It'll sort of set in there now. It's a little bit softer. Let's get this open. The key is actually making this thick enough. I almost wish this was thicker, believe it or not. I almost wish, it, again, this is the piece of blister pack. I realize now that I'm kind of glad I didn't use my original palette paper thing because pulling this off, it's nice to have a flat surface. And again, this is totally reusable. I think the palette paper might not have been quite as easy to use as. Also, you're going to have to sacrifice a certain part of it. So that's why I went this far along because I knew just was gonna have to sacrifice some of that so let's let's get ourselves some nice nice amounts of this here just big old gobs of it because yeah I really wish I had gone thicker with it initially I'm just gonna get this out of the way if I think if I tilt it this way you can see it with relatively little glare so we're just gonna spread this out you can see look at this that looked like a whole bunch and it's already starting to thin out here. And then we just start to pull this along. And you do this a couple of times, but yeah, this see this is a much this is actually much better than what I had originally. Yeah, this is way better than my test ones here. Far better. Well, that's why you so I try these things. You try them to learn. So I definitely suggest going much thicker. Now I'm going to spread this around. Spread it all around here. Get all those areas filled in. That's one thing I definitely learned was it's a lot easier to just fill it in first and then do those strokes. Now, there's Woodland Scenics. There's a specific water effects for this kind of thing. I just wanted to see if this would actually do a, a similar thing, and it really does. It really does do a very similar thing. And you can see as we as we start to manipulate this, it gets a little bit smoother. We don't want it completely smooth, though, because, well, it is supposed to be water running down. And even this stuff down here, don't mind it so much because water sort of does that. And on top of that, I'm going to actually get rid of some of the excess here. That's better. Yeah, so much thick. I, I do really like this thicker batch that I did. Unfortunately, I don't, I'm not going to wait a couple of hours for that to dry. We can always apply more to the thinner stuff that I've got. So it'll just be an extra step there and maybe not so horrible because, well, we can actually, uh, I was gonna have to add it to this anyway just to make it look more like running water instead of just a, basically a sheet of glue. Because <laughs> in some ways that's what it's gonna look a little bit like is when you take the Elmer's glue and you put it on your hand when you're a kid and then you let it dry and then it does the, you know, you pull it off and it's kind of a skin on your skin there so yeah, we're gonna just to, there we go. See that's nice, nice and thick. It's opaque now, but look at how it's gonna dry. It will dry like this. See all those nifty little striations in there? So I really I really like that. I think that's pretty fun. That is really nifty. Getting just a just your old flat brush right here, nothing super fancy. Nothing super fancy. And you, you can do this in you know, a bunch of different blister packs, and then you just have it. You know, instead of just for one project, I was tempted to do tons of these just to have them around so I could use them on other things. But what we're going to do now is we'll wait for this to look like this, and we're going to get some paint on our fountain and get that all finished and ready for some weathering. And we're going to do that next. Let's get some paint on this guy here. And we kept it pretty simple. We've actually got brown liner over here. 
still haven't located a sepia liner and I was going to use other pro acrylics anyway so here's your dark golden brown we've got a couple of lighter colors here like the bright pale green we also have our maggot white maiden flesh I'm going to keep it just pretty darn simple here pretty darn simple now you can see how much darker we can go we can also go lighter and yeah, I don't want to do a lot of staining on this one here I'd rather actually have this be a little bit more geez I don't think I want to say pristine but just something a little less worn and destroyed than some of the other things that we've done and we've got ourselves a liner brush here and not a lot of this is terribly exciting but we also want to maybe do some other glazing type things we do have to kind of superimpose some of the texture here this it's the nature of 3d printing and this was not printed at a massively high resolution it is it's terrain after all if this was I don't know if you're doing something for a, a painting contest or something like that and, and you wanted it to be super perfect well then you you print it at that resolution that you need here we didn't really need perfection so it was just it was printed at a resolution good enough for terrain to be on camera it's gonna look really nice just like all those other terrain pieces were printed pretty much at this resolution here and you can see the difference that that starts to make and well that's what we've got some of our other colors for here let's uh, go into some of our so it's a little bit more towards the yellowish side of things and there you go I can start to pull out some other stones here make this a little more a little more interesting now we don't have to go nuts with it and this is not super light either this is hardly what I would say or call a white so we'll be doing a lot of that I just didn't think you needed to see me doing that across the entire surface of this thing I think it's a little bit better if you maybe see some of this these other ideas like this and yeah, depending on how much lighter I make it here, let's get this stone here and this stone over here it, it's kind of nifty to do these stones in slightly different colors some maybe a little more greenish some a little bit more towards the brown and even this right here we can start to think about maybe giving it a little bit more just a little more life to it now there's again a lot of striations because of the the printing resolution there but if we do a nice little gentle brush stroke with this we get some lighter colors in there but because they're the, the brush is wet it's not a dry brush there's plenty of paint in there that is going to help cover some of those resolution lines now I know I've mentioned it a couple of times the the Badger Steiner res they're, they're coming up with a primer that's supposed to fill in some of these now I wouldn't necessarily fill all these in and make it look like a resin print or something like that but it could mitigate some of these lines just with all of the weirdness on hand at this point that's that could be more of a summer thing or whatever so yeah that I don't know when I will actually have that in my hands to mess around with and see how this is even changing color here is some of the some more of that bluish white gets in there and here let's just hit this little our spout up here and yes I'll just use my finger to do some rudimentary blending on that because we're gonna go back into it and like I said we're gonna hit it with some other colors too to eff effectively give it a, a touch of weathering too some more of this here again we've got to keep paint on that brush because as soon as it gets to be a dry brush all those striations really they start to crop up but if you do it like you can see how the striations they kind of appear and then they sort of disappear as more paint gets on there 
And I can I can paint cracks into this thing if I wanted to. We could really go nuts. Get not a dry brush. Plenty of paint on here. Plenty of paint on there. Oh, and this gonna this thing roving around here doing some different stones. I'm trying to space these out just a bit. Here, let's get a little touch of touch of green in here now. So we're we're sort of emphasizing what the airbrush picked out in those earliest stages there. Now you can see a little difference here between difference between that yellowish tan color and this sort of a green here. We'll do the stones on the side as well. But now I'm just going to focus on these ones that we're looking at from the top down. A little bit easier for you to see. See, if I had just done a dry brush here, there would have been an awful lot of texture that sort of shows up that maybe I don't really want to have show up. If you remember from that first episode that we did, it was a little bit of the same idea. Now maybe we get some, here's some of the darker ones. So you can see with the brown liner, we've been able to pretty well match what was done initially there, but it Maybe it's a little bit lighter here. Let's get a little bit more of this. A little bit more of the maiden flesh. And that's how it changes that color now. So it doesn't take a whole bunch to have different colors in this. And they're not dramatically different colors. But you're sort of getting red, green, yellow in there. In a very subtle way. Nice and subtle. And it really is it. Is it that long? This is going to be probably a centerpiece of your terrain board, most likely, I would think. So, having some a little extra, a little extra effort on some of these elements, not a bad idea. So we can start to bring out some of these stones here on the side. It, this is in addition to doing all of the the lines that we did over here but it's given them a little bit of a we're accentuating those a bit I'm gonna do this one over here and this is the nice thing about the flat brushes here you almost never see me using them I, I kind of use them a lot on terrain I definitely use these a lot more on terrain no they're just when you got something like this where you need these these blocks and stones to be a little bit more linear, well, what better way to do that with a brush like this? This is a, basically a place for every kind of tool, really. I don't want to go dark with these stones. And this is as dark as I want to go. Because remember, I didn't want this to be a fountain that's, what would you say, I don't want to say corroded, but just in disrepair I guess you want it to look like a, a fountain of a of a living city uh, the city was well the city was toast would you really have a lot of working fountains in it probably not and here's some of our going in with some of our lightest stone colors now it really starts to change starts to change this guy around and I will show you how this looks compared to our other one. That's why I wanted to have two of these going at the same time. Because then you could get a, a decent idea of the difference that it's going to make. Just just this little bit that I'm doing right here. Nothing terribly fancy. It's, it's not going to kill you to do this little bit of extra stuff here. Won't be terribly hard. It's just a few colors. That's all it is. See if we can get some of that into here. I'm going to go even, maybe a touch later. Just want to make sure that you can see that it's not blocked by anything. Using the 
the width of the brush, the width of the bristles. Keep in mind too that your creature caster paints, those are just going to cover more than say something like the maggot white and maiden flesh. And that's a the, the bright ivory, that's a good portion of what's in this right here. And now you can see this has a little bit more shading on it than it did even with the airbrush. Even with the airbrush. Anyway, I'm just going to make that one, that stone's also going to be a lighter color. Just because, just because... And then maybe we switch it towards a little more towards the green for some of these stones. Not, not not every single one. I don't want every single stone to be lighter. I guess I don't want it to look like all of these stones came from different quarries or or something along those lines, but. Okay, I'm just I'm looking at some of these more vertical oriented stones here. Gotta do those as well. I can do the, the weathering streaks on this if I wanted to. So back to something that's got more of the yellow in it. And that looks like uh, one stone. I thought that was two. Some of these, it just takes one brush stroke, boom, it's done. The stuff that's down in the interior there, I am not really going to labor away at trying to get a brush down in there because we got water effects going in there, we got leaves going in there. I think we have enough things to keep that interesting where we don't necessarily have to be shoving a paintbrush in there and dealing with that. Sometimes keeping it simpler is the best plan. And like I said, depending on how much weathering you want on yours, maybe you don't have this much in the way of different colors of stone. Maybe that's where you do your, your weathering powders and you get a bunch of streaking on it or whatever. And that's that's very cool too. That is definitely just fine. Now that, the nice thing about doing this stuff first before all of the lines there is I don't have to worry necessarily about if I go over so I'm even going to hit some of that here too now here I'm just going to switch tack a little bit and just have this run along with the the texture of the printing and just as say you know what instead of fighting it by going opposite against the grain, I'll just go with the grain. I'll go with the printing on that. I guess another little thing to consider, I mean, it's just not super consequential, but how are you going to be viewing this thing? Is it mostly going to be seen from the top down like this? Are you really going to be seeing it from the side all that often? So that's another thing to, to consider. Now, the, the nice thing about adding all of the your, your weathering type of stuff is that then you don't have to worry so much about getting things down into these crevices because well they'll be filled up by that stuff so I also have to remember it's it's planning ahead all of this stuff is any kind of weathering or whatever it is like a chess match and you're always having to plan several moves in advance and that's what we're trying to do here I'm just looking at it to see if there's, you know, there's something that's really a little bit too dark. Maybe some of these stones a little bit too dark. We don't want them that dark. We'll lighten those up. And, well, guess what? You know, a lot of those dark lines that we had to do, we don't have to do as many. Then it becomes more of a cleanup process, maybe, and less of a having to just go in and do every single line can even start to think about maybe some of the stones are changing colors or maybe lighter in one hand. See, this is a little bit darker over here, maybe a little bit lighter over here. 
Maybe we go a bit more like so. I want to get that particular stone there. So we're, again, we're picking out some of these stones here on the side. Let's, let's do a little bit of, I'm just going to call it a middle tone rock on some of these just to again looking for some separation here and I can always if I have a smaller brush like this I can use it I can still use my number eight round craft brushes for this it doesn't have to be one of these brushes I am however on the underside of this I want to get some some kind of shading work in here I know it's going to be a little tough for you to see. Maybe not the easiest thing to see, but remember, it's also going to be, there's going to be some water kind of getting in the way of that. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's hit this too, I think, with a little bit of a lighter color. Again, kind of thinking of going with the grain of this and just starts to hide some of that some of that texture what have we here yeah let's uh, maybe get our smaller brush here we can do some of these rocks a little bit easier to get those don't want to forget my greenish color here And I will go back in and, and clean up some of these, like here. There's just, there's no texture there. We'll go back in and we'll get some of those. See, even with the light enough stroke here, there, I still leave behind a little bit of the, the stone outline. I can still do these with this brush. You don't have to have the other type of brush. It's sometimes you just whatever tool you got is going to have to be the tool that you have, and that's it. I am going to think about a few lighter areas, especially maybe up here. And this now where this brush is going to start to be a little more handy. But I also have to think too, okay, when the water is covering this, if, if it's so light, the water is transparent, is it going to show any kind of shape at all? Yeah, will the water just kind of disappear with all the stones being just so incredibly light? Something i got to consider. Something I should definitely consider. So look at this. This is a neat thing about the, look at that, just one brush stroke, boom, it's done. If I set this on its side, it just covers that much more. And if I wanted to use oils on this, I could. I'm, I will try and do some of these with the oils just to see how that works. Now, of course, it will it's going to delay things like we'd have to let it dry before we can do our water effects it's the the advantage of the acrylics is at least it's going to be dry when it's dry it's dry that's it don't have to worry about it certainly wouldn't have to seal anything because well it's just acrylics over acrylics and this is the the bright ivory here from pro acryl because that covers very well And what I will do is get some more of the lighter colors out here, too. I don't want to lose some of the variation in the greens and other stuff, so got to be careful. I can even use my hat. could have used the sponge here, too, to blend some things. Now, 
throw some wash in there and then get rid of it with the sponge could have done that too as it starts to to brighten up here I think it looks less like a fountain from a ruined city and maybe more like a fountain from a city that still has a little bit of life left in it again an operational fountain generally requires somebody to be living in town so that is why we're that's why we're making this a little bit later than maybe some of the other pieces of terrain that we've done as, as part of this series this will be less about ruins of iron ore this particular fountain piece here and a little bit more about you know, Gondor cities that are still still kind of intact it's not always about having destroyed cities although they're cool because ruins are fun to fight in or at least do your your battles in yeah again not going to do that super light there Let, let's start to think about let's go back to some of our brown liner stuff here And now that we've got some of that in place, we can do some of these these panels here. And now we get a little bit of separation between some of our rocks. Now the thing is too, it just it can't be too watered down because as soon as it gets too watered down, it starts to basically bleed because it's going through the the striations there. So it's important to keep it wet enough to flow but not so wet that it's just going to seep into all of those crevices which that makes it a little bit challenging that does make it a little more challenging you can see now we get that much more separation between the stones Yeah, just making sure I don't get too crazy with how much water I've put in there I, I learned my lesson on some of the original terrain pieces because I had this I thought oh this will be great I'll have this real watery type thing it's gonna flow into those little crevices there and we'll be able to do all this nifty stuff and it sort of worked here but on the vertical parts we have all of these striations not so much so just something to be aware of I mean it's easily fixed not a problem Again, some of these cracks, they're a little bit deeper than other ones. It's really more, it's the mortar between it. This, well, there are some cracks in the stone that are actually sculpted, in, well, like this one. Who knows, maybe we have some water flowing out of that crack. I just don't know quite how deep I want this water to get. Because it doesn't make a lot of sense to have this water overflowing here, because then why is it not going down the steps, too? So I think what we'll do is... We'll just call these bottom ones down here that there's maybe some other interior outlets of water that, that can get into there and fill in those lower basins. So what I will do is I'll just, I'm going to do this, especially here because, well, you can barely see what the heck I'm doing here. So I'm going to go in and do all of these little lines. It's very repetitive. I think you get clearly get the idea of what's going on here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get out our Luke's APS glue. We're going to get out some leaves. We're going to get our leaf cutters. And we're going to focus on adding some foliage to this thing. Because I think that's going to really make it look very interesting. And we're going to do that next. One of the things we're going to need for this next stage is some cut leaves. And we've got some of my favorite leaf cutters from Green Stiff World. And it's got a little container here. You can see I've got some other leaves of different colors. We just, every fall, we start collecting leaves. Now, I do suggest, actually, that not only do you press them in a book to flatten them out, but you do this sooner rather than later. I try to keep these around just so I could do, well, things like this. So I'm going to get some of the points off of here. Get rid of some of these 
points and get rid of that. And then leaves. I've tried doing this with paper and other type of thing. It's just not the same. It is not the same. You don't get the the little veins in the leaves like you do here. It's just it's not the same at all. It it just literally looks like paper, whereas these look like leaves. Because who would have thought that leaves represent leaves very well? I mean, just who would have imagined that? Now they don't always just fall right into the a little bin right here. And what you do is, is I can take some of this away right here. And now I can get at the interior of this leaf. Get a few more out of it. And this is, see all this texture right here? You can't get that from paper. You're just not going to get that. There's nothing quite like it. And you've seen me use these on vehicles and all kinds of different stuff here. I've even used it on my, well, bigger terrain pieces than this as sort of an accent on a, well, you saw it in the buildings. Now look, we got a whole bunch of these leaves all over the place. Nice big old collection of them there. Plenty of stuff that we can use for the inside of our fountain here. Now, again, there's, there's other things you could use. You could use some kind of construction paper or whatever, but to me... I just, there's nothing quite like having the actual leaves like this. You can stain these things. Let's say you take some weathering powders, maybe some rubbing alcohol or even some fixative or whatever. You could stain it with oil washes. I've done that too. So you get even more colors out of them. Now there's a different type of leaf. And I've, I've used actually green leaves too because, well, Sometimes green leaves fall to the ground as well, but the the other issue is what if you wanted to put some leaves on a tree? You, know, you have one of those little kind of delicate, small little bushes or whatever that maybe only has a few dozen leaves on it. You could potentially glue some leaves on some of these leaves right here. So I'm going to just get a a little bit of a collection here if I can. Fill this out here. We don't really need this many for the fountain. I just want to show you how easy it is to make them. Uh, it's just, it's not that hard. Look at, look at all the leaves. Look at all the fun leaves that we've got sitting here. I might just do another leaf here. It also depends what kind of trees you got by you. Uh, it could be, you know, not all leaves are created equal. Some of them have some great color. I've also been asked, do I put these in the glycerol? I have a really good friend who does that, and it does you know, saves a little bit more of the color for sure. Because as, as nice as this leaf looks, it did have some more color on it when it was freshly picked up off the ground. There, nice little collection of different colors: some red, some you know, some different types of leaves here. And again, they make tons more rollers. They're just this is just a few of them here. There's more than this even. I think I've got at least three or four more. So look at that. So just lots of fun, lots of fun different shapes. We got our leaves ready. Now these are from Luke's APS. And I, I really enjoy these, these forest ground covers here. We've also got the fast drying glue right here. And we're going to have a couple different types. We're going to have the watered down version, and then we're also going to have the the full-on version. Let's get these guys out of the way here. Let's grab our fountain. Got some, some of these leaves here. Now I used to use the sand and gravel glue. I still have it and it's still a favorite. But there is something about... I do enjoy the Luke's APS. I'm hoping that it also works well for when we've got to attach our water fountain stuff. We'll see. <laughs> we shall see about that. All right, I'm going to get a couple of containers of glue here. So this one's actually going to have a little water in it there. So that's our, for a watered-down glue, and then we'll have our full-on glue over here. So water down there. And the idea is here, we'll get this a bit more. There we go. 
Hopefully this will be thin enough to flow down into our cracks. Speaking of which, now here, what we're going to do first, let's start with this top level here. Don't do too much. See, I don't want to go crazy with this. But we're just going to have a little collection here of some leaves. Sort of sitting down here like you do. There. Now again, the the clear uh, the uh, sand and gravel glue is sort of a clear type of a thing. Uh, maybe you know I I could have gone with it either way. It's the Luke's APS is based here in the U.S., whereas getting the sand and gravel glue, well, that's going to be coming from Spain, and well, that's a little more difficult at this point. But I can even see on that one right there, I could see the the little veins on the back of that leaf. Really cool. Yeah, I can see the veins on the back of that leaf there. And there we go. And this, uh, it dries pretty quickly. I, I have seen that with the Luke's APS stuff here. Get some, yeah, see, we're just kind of collecting those where they would kind of naturally collect. We're going to get some here around the base of that pillar and the corners of the basin and you know, I could just take handfuls of leaves and, and drop those in there and just kind of see where they go see what they stick to you know, it's not quite as targeted of a method but you can see they're stuck in there now you know, just kind of rattle them around in there until they stick to something, basically. Or I can go in here and position those. I just didn't want to get into that because, well, it will be hard for you to see. But we also don't want to cover up all the glue here because, yeah, we want some leaves in here, but I also want some of the other material in there, too. Again, I'm just going to Give that a bit of a shake and see where the leaves land. I do want them to be basically flat. That, that's I think that's kind of an important thing. Okay, we're going to grab some of this here. This is some of the more the greenish. Just basically a little bit of a debris that's it's collected in the fountain. It's seeds, right? You, you think uh, trees in this well, it's supposed to be spring here. It's kind of been spring-ish <laughs> and sometimes winter. But you're thinking the little seed pods from the trees, so maybe that's what that represents in the inside your fountain there. A little bit of your seed action going on for your trees. Here, let's get a little bit of this maybe. Very nice, and I'm just going to, I think these bottom basins here will really have some, I'm just going to really throw in some leaves here. You can, it's so much in shadow you can barely even see what the, the brush is putting in there. But I'm just going to dump some leaves down in there, give them a shake, see where they stick or not stick. If they don't stick, that's just fine. The water effects will hold them in place. Uh, there's not much doubt about that. Where's my... Aha, uh -huh, here we go. Some of this. Down into the crevices there. A little bit of a shake. Now, let us... I also want to do that now on my... on the outer surfaces over fountain here. Then I'm going to start with some of the corners here. Start with some of the cracks. And you can see here, look at how the the glue flows very nicely. 
skin. We're gonna grab some more of our material here. Just kind of guide that into place. I don't want to cover up the entire thing because if I do, then it's gonna look super overgrown. I just I mean, this was what happens. It happens to your house too. And just the the wind blows some sand. In. Look at that. See, it, it it gives instead of this looking like maybe freshly cut stone or whatever. Now it just gives them a little bit more. It also hides the kind of the print lines too, which is a good thing. It means that you didn't have to run your printer for a bazillion hours to get that super high res thing on a piece of terrain that most folks will just see it oh that's a really neat fountain they'll see the water effects they're not really going to see if they're focusing on print lines maybe they need to focus on something else <laughs> i'm just going to say that maybe they're just kind of focusing too much on a limited just on print lines i know that that is a big focus and everybody gets really into the resolution of a print printer and that sort of thing but so yeah, that that's kind of nice and i can still put weathering powders on this too there's nothing that says i can't do that after this stage and i might do that also i just i want to get to the water effects as soon as possible because those need to dry and they will have to be done in a few stages. That's for sure. So here, I might just be a little more targeted with the leaves. So, yeah, look at that nice little leaf right there. That's where the little leaf lives. And now we've got our ground cover here. That we'll throw into... throw into the crevices it's nice that this stuff is, is fine enough to really get down into those crevices yeah so it, now it doesn't look like so much those rocks were just painted in I guess we're thinking the places where wind weather whatever it would sort of naturally push all this stuff and heck, if it is actually a fountain where people are walking around or being near it or whatever, they would sort of kind of kick the leaves into these into these parts right here. They would not actually, maybe the leaves wouldn't be just resting nicely and neatly out on the middle of the stones. So again, it's all these little things to consider. Right. To me, this, I just really enjoy putting out the leaves like this there's something about just a, a leaf right there it, it look to me it looks so realistic for so little effort it, it's always the thing with terrain you're sort of battling or balancing realism playability there's all of these sort of competing interests and bond price too you know leaves are free I could take the leaves. I could crush up the leaves too, and maybe simulate some. Of it. Look at that. See what that does. See what that just I, to me. I think on, on all of the all my buildings, I just got to do this because it's so much fun. Uh, let's say you used ground up loose leaf tea I've done that too on terrain pieces and I've got blog articles on that that worked really well you don't even need the whole mortar and pesto thing you just you can just make a take a bag of it and smash it with a hammer or something like that just to bust up some bust up some loose leaf tea heck we've even taken just tea bags and after the tea was used we emptied out the tea into you know, another container and I use that for flock and such you, you've already paid for the tea why not why not get more use out of it 
And for those of you that saw that first terrain video, that sets on the Patreon page, you saw me really putting a lot of these on that first terrain piece. That was there was a lot of leaves on there, a lot of a lot of this weathering to be done. Now see that the Luke's APS it does activate pretty fast, so I've got to move quick with it. I can't do too large of an area here. Got to do an, an area and, and sort of get this stuff on there and then move on. I'm just gonna take the extra here. We'll knock it in. Look at that. And mostly gonna looks like I'm gonna be sticking with the the thin down glue here. That was a big surprise for me. I really didn't think that adding this much water to it was gonna let me get this much adhesion from it. I thought for sure, but then I saw in in some of his terrain videos that I think he was actually even using rubbing alcohol to thin this down, but he was practically turning this glue into a wash, and it was still it was holding rocks and gravel and that sort of thing. So now that okay, if it works there, hopefully it'll work on this piece or this type of terrain, and it seems to seems to work pretty well. Yeah, there's another pile of leaves there. There's just there's some spots that are really good for them. Every once in a while, I will have a leaf that sort of sits out on top of a stone, especially, say, a darker colored leaf on a lighter colored stone. It's, it's not like there's going to be miniatures standing on these particular steps anyway. So what's the big deal if maybe these leaves are sitting out on the steps here? It's, it's not going to really hurt anything. It's going to add something. It definitely will add some. It gives it a little bit of color. It's something that's not printed. You know, but the natural leaves, and actually a lot of this is just natural materials here. So something that may be, you know, obviously the, you know, you got your 3D print lines here. The more of this natural stuff, you can kind of make the eye sort of go oh, okay i see all this natural stuff and the eye focuses on that it focuses on the water the leaves the flock focuses on those things and maybe just gets a little bit oh shall we say distracted from mold line that mold lines from print lines that was a freudian slip there back to more leaves i'm gonna put a big old batch there big old batch of leaves in that corner because I just sort of feel like it back to again it's a combination of a couple different types of the ground cover here there's also basically what well, looks a little like dirt it's it's like a forest trail I think that's what it's actually called is this trail ground cover or something like that. I'll just again knock off the extra and you see what we're left behind with and you know, maybe some of this also fluffs off a little bit. But I also want to let this sit here too and let, let this glue do its thing. As, as fast acting as it can be I also want to let it do its thing. Let's see. Look at that, that edge. See how it just kind of Goes right up to the edge. Let's me grab some leaves. This is essentially the same thing I would do with the sand and gravel glue. However, that doesn't necessarily hold things quite so fast as this. Now you you do have to deal with the obviously the white appearance of the glue whereas the sand and gravel glue is just it's clear from the start but you're not trying to film a video when you're doing yours you're just doing yours so I think you'll be all good there like this big old crack here you know what to me I think it's gonna be better if it's actually filled in with stuff because how can it be that deep of a crack 
and there's just there's nothing ends up in there. I'm not quite sure how that would happen. So we resolve that by let's get. I just want to get a couple of leaves over here in this corner. And some of the finest stuff down into again down in that little crack there. Get some more of the fine. Sometimes you have to hunt around for just the right stuff, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Let's tap off some of the extra there. Look at that. That looks way more natural than just a big old crack yeah I will I will throw a few things up here probably not gonna go very heavy on this but perhaps a leaf or two that's too many leaves in one spot there we go I really like that leaf to stay right there Give it just a touch of that, or not so much up there because we're thinking more on the cracks and stuff. See here, look at that. You can see the paint didn't even reach there. I didn't care because I knew I was going to do this. I think you can see that this probably takes way less time than trying to paint all those things different color, or at least in all of those little nooks and crannies. Because there was obviously. You didn't see all of the painting that I had to do. And, and saving on that, we we talk about this in the Army Painting Series all the time. If you can save 10, 15 minutes here, there, it, it starts to add up. It can add up really fast. You think, oh, what's the extra 10 minutes, whatever. Well, multiply that by several times, and all of a sudden now, it does matter. Now it does matter. Ah, we got another one of these big old cracks right here. Now, I'm th I'm tempted to maybe actually have some water coming out of that, so I'm not going to actually fill that. Not going to fill that, but what I am going to think about now is maybe some leaves out in the stone. Remember, we have some of these lighter stones. Let's get... I'm not going to do any of the... I'm just going to do a little bit of the targeted dirt stuff right in there, and that's it. Let's see some now some leaves just out in the stones. Maybe over here too. Maybe just a couple out here. And we will let this all dry. Gonna let this all dry. And the next thing we'll do is we'll hit the still water. So that the still water, that is gonna be well, that's going to be a, a much faster process, or at least I hope it's going to be, by virtue of using that green stuff world, the, the resin, the UV resin. So the, the idea is there is to get that fast cure resin involved instead of maybe all of the, the slow dry secret weapon stuff. Because the other thing, too, is when you use any kind of, whether it's woodland, scenics, or whatever, still water, Vallejo, same thing. It's going to shrink on you. So you're waiting all this time for it to dry, and then it shrinks on you. Now, disadvantage of the UV water effects is that over time they can yellow. It just it depends what are you willing to live. There's kind of pluses and minuses to everything. What are what pluses and minuses mean the most to you? But I think this is all just a plus right here. And what we're going to do is let all this stuff dry, and we're going to do all the water in the basins next. This next step is pretty straightforward. Basically, we put the UV resin down in the basins, and then we hit it with this light. And I do advise that you make sure the batteries are pretty strong in this thing, because this is what's going to cure it. Now, I will reiterate that you use these the one thing that can happen is they can yellow I'm thinking that it mostly yellows if you expose it to a lot of direct sunlight um, I'm thinking if you keep it in a case or out of the sun repeatedly I think you should be pretty okay with that I don't really care here because nobody's gonna see that 
no one's I just want to get this stuff filled and I want to get it filled relatively quickly here now this definitely is going to dry very clear but it's going to take a oh, it could take many hours to dry that just that's how it is with almost all of these to even the woodland scenic stuff the Vallejo stuff very much the same and besides I really want to save this for my crushed glass snow anyways so probably won't be using that but it's a, just another option if you have time let's say you're working on a bunch of these or several things that require several things that require the UV or some kind of water effect but what we're going to do is we are going to get this down in here let that get filled up there, there we go don't want to go too far with it and then we're going to hit it with our UV light and you can actually there's smoke that comes out of it don't worry about the smoke it's not on fire it's just it's a thing that happens when it cures it's one way to know that it's actually curing and I haven't really noticed any kind of thing with fumes or anything along those lines generally once do you get the, the the smoke to kind of clear a little bit to me that is when it's actually been cured now this is real this is about as deep as I've ever poured this stuff so I just want to make sure I just want to make sure and again this fills up that that basin really quick that's the sweet thing about it okay let's see what we got here let's see what we have now it doesn't seem to be moving and let me let me change my focus so you can see this ah look at that and the other thing that we can do is we can put some of our other water effects over the top of that to give it some waves if we want. But see all those little leaves down in there? Yeah. Those leaves are submerged. I love it. I love it. So let's do a couple of other basins here. Like you do. And just do one more here, and then we'll do the main one. I want to make sure... I'll make sure we have what we need to actually do the main basin here. There actually are other colors of this. I think there's a green one that's sort of like a nuclear waste type of a color. And remember, I don't have to fill this up all the way because we want water effects, right? We want splashing water. Look at those the references of the fountains. There, there's so much splashing water. We're going to be using that that liquitex heavy gel for a lot of the additional stuff. we just want to get the the basins filled here so you know that's going to be good enough right here i think like i said just as long as it's cured enough and i'm not going to be poking at this all right let's see what we can do now with the large basin and I'm just going to spin this around here. And I also want to have enough for my top basin. All right. Good enough. We're just going to take a junk, junky old brush here that we don't care about. And the idea is I push this. All right. It will seek its own level. It will seek its own level. So, and it's doing that even without the brush here to push it around. It's seeking its own level. I think you can, well, you see a lot of reflections off of it, but it is definitely, yeah, it's moving along. It's covering up the leaves because that's the the key thing. If the leaves aren't covered, they're not really going to look like they're underwater, are they? All right, I think they are now basically covered. And if you tip this over, this stuff's going to be running all over the place. I, I found that out the hard way when I just absentmindedly sort of tipped over something that I was putting the water effects in. And yeah, that didn't go so well. Didn't really work out super fantabulous doing that. I will put a bit more in here. It's going to seek its level now, especially with all of the other, now that it's been spread out like that. And 
just let it work its way around. Again, that, that top part of the fountain is a little bit in the way there, so we'll just make sure that we can move this around. We, I just want to make sure, yeah, those are all effectively underwater. Okay, good to go. They are good to go. Ignition. You could use potentially those nail polish curing things. I will actually probably be getting a few of those for curing resin printed stuff. My, oh, wow, that really... Yeah, just look at my water effects over here. That's really nifty. Very nice. Very nice. This won't take quite so long to cure because it's not as deep. This is probably one third as deep as those basins that I filled on the bottom half. Okay. I'm just gonna turn off the light for now. Again, all of this water, that's really gonna be heavy duty water effects from a Liquitex heavy gel. Now, this will be a little more delicate here. I don't want to fill this up too much, so we'll just go slow. We'll do this nice and slow like. And once you get plenty in, again, I can... There's going to have to be some wave action on here, so that is why I don't want to overfill it with just the still water. Okay. But it's got to be deep enough that it's going to pour over the sides, right? I just don't want it pouring over the sides while I'm doing this. And I might actually just approach this in two waves, uh, no pun intended. I'm going to pull this out here. Then I'm going to cure it, and then I'll do a second one. It's kind of better safe than sorry. Now, of course, if it went over the edge, well, I could potentially try to draw this over the edge and then hit it with the light that that is a possibility i've seen some videos on the green stuff world site where, where they tried to do that's just that sort of thing however i'm just going to do this here we're going to not have the brush in harm's way because then it'll just cure into the brush it, again it's a junky brush it doesn't matter but i'd like to have it available for doing the rest of this thing here and you can yeah, you can see some of the smoke coming off there. Again, it was weird the first time I saw that. I was like, what the heck's going on here? Now, I'm imagining that the uh, <laughs> when you stick your nails under one of those nail polish curing things, it doesn't smoke like this, but, you know, is what it is. And though it's not the 3D resin melting or anything like that, that is just, it's a normal thing. It just happens. It just, it just, uh, part of the it's a part of this material what do we got going on here all right yeah very nice we're almost there we really don't need a whole lot of water there and I could, again I could just do that with the Liquitex heavy gel and just fill that in in fact, I might because it's gotta it's gotta have some wave action going on, right? Gotta have some wave action. Okay, so what we're going to do then is we'll just fill in these other these other areas. You you kind of see how that works. But yeah, look at that. We got we got ourselves some water in there, and when I tilt it over, it all doesn't spill out. That's very nice. And it just it's that's what ten minutes, right? No big deal. So we'll fill in these other basins now. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start playing around with our with this water here. And we're going to break out some more of the 
More of the heavy gel. This is where it kind of gets exciting. Could get a little crazy, but it's going to get exciting too. So we'll do that next. So I did a couple of things here. I pulled those sheets off of the plastic blisters. And one thing I found is that this actually, it has the same kind of stickiness that the Woodland Scenics water effects have. So I'll, that's good news. The bad news is that when it folds over, it's just going to stick to itself in your hose. Nothing you can do about that. Here I have a little bit bigger sheet. That worked out pretty well. Now, this is potentially here. Let's just take a, let's cut some of this here just for the heck of it. I'm just going to cut that. So it does cut okay. Now, all is not lost because, in theory, you could do something like this for and just glue it down somewhere. And it could be for, see those uh, little tendril-type streams of water on the one reference? On the, so you could literally do something like that if we just wanted individual little rivulets of water. If I want more than that, I, I would rather just have sort of a a sheet of water I just I would prefer that maybe not complete sheet going all the way across I do have to get some measurements here though I also drilled a hole up here with the idea that we're going to use some of this blister pack here as a bit of a, a little bit of a here let's get this instead of an armature a little bit of an armature here it's clear it's gonna Cut that there, and then the idea is, at least the hope is that I can get this cut down thin enough to fit in my little pilot hole there. So I'm just going to use this little nice, see if I can, there we go. That's what I'm looking to do is just carve away a little bit of this could sand it down too, but I don't want to have that sort of frosted look. Let's see if that will stay there. And I think it will with some glue. I'm going to make it even thinner if I can. And it's all going to be covered by water effects anyway. So I don't have to go crazy. It doesn't have to be a perfect water shape. It doesn't have to be water shape at all. But it does need to get glued in here using super glue. And we'll just let that kind of sit in there now while we do water effects elsewhere. So I'll make sure that's straight. That is straight. This right here, I'm not even going to fill with the water effects. I'm just going to do that with, with this. So I'm not even going to worry about that yet. Let's get some measurements here. So I need sheets that are about yay long here. Which uh, actually is almost about the same distance or same length as this right here. So I'm going to just use my cutting board as a bit of a measuring tool here. Again, pardon me while I just sort of stretch this out here. There we go. And this is a nice sharp blade. Yeah, there we go. All right. What do we got here? Okay, that's still okay. And now I'm going to make it a little bit longer, perhaps. And this is a self healing mat. This is the first time I've actually cut anything on this. I've just been painting on this before. Let's just uh, get that separated here. I 
And now... I'm going to cut this part off here, like you do. And I may not... I don't even know if I want that to be 100%. You know what? I'm just going to do this. I'm going to actually cut it here. Not sure if you can see that. But it does, it's, it's touching my water here. It's actually, okay, so I need to raise this up. If it falls short, that's okay because I can use the water effects to basically raise that level. But I, what I gotta have, okay, maybe not that high. So the nice thing is so it sticks to itself, and it does stick to this if you really press it. And I move it down again. So th this is trial and error here. I also don't want to tear this too much. All right. So I think, yeah, see, we got the nice, uh, look at that, see how it kind of drips over there like that. You know what, I'm even going to, I'm going to cut that again, because I don't want it to be quite that full of a sheet of water. If, if I think you know what I mean by that. All right. So we've got ourselves... Just looking to have a few sheets of this here. I'm gonna just store them right here. So I think we're, I think we're on our way. I'm gonna make a couple of more out of this too. Maybe of varying widths. Those are all kind of similar. Okay, so there's a couple of narrow ones here. You can see that. Yeah, yeah, you can see that there. All right. Now, this is where things get kind of interesting because we are going to throw some glue out here. This is, again, the Luke's APS glue. It's fast drying. It's going to dry clear. So... This is just going to have to be a little off-centered for you here. Hopefully that still works and you can see it. Now again, this is going to dry clear. But what I'm hoping, and you can kind of see now, there's a, I can see from the angle here from the side, this is how you can really tell there's depth in that water. So the idea is here is, we're trying to get some adhesion to those pieces that are going to hang down. I, hopefully they are long enough. Hopefully they are long enough. All right. And I don't mind, even if this glue dries here, I'll just throw some more on it. But I kind of want it to get tacky. I almost want it to dry a little bit. If I had a hair dryer, I almost might be prone to maybe hit it with a hair dryer. So there we go. Now, huh, next question. I might even get me a little tweezers to help me with this. I don't know if that's really going to help as much as I hope it does, but we shall see. I'm just trying to get that to have a little glue on it. little bit of glue so I might just have to let that get see because that wants to stick to me and not my new surface and I do want this to hang down that's <laughs> this it, it gets tacky everything gets tacky really really fast with this with this glue here yep and that is why it's it's 
Again, it's holding on to everything else except the area that I want, and that's just not so unusual. But I think we actually have contact now. And I'm just going to ditch using that, and I'm going to use a brush instead. All right. Can you see? Yeah, you can see that. So there is, we have part of our water sheet there. Now I could have maybe also used the Liquitex Heavy Gel itself. Okay, so that doesn't want to stay there. It only wants to stick to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to ditch some of that glue and hope that we actually get some some residue left behind. Because it's the residue that's really sticky, less so than the glue itself. Because now my hands are really sticky. Let's see what happens. Now I can't have this be bowed here and hitting that water. So I'm going to have to keep moving this until it stays there. Even if it's hanging down vertically and not touching anything on the bottom level. So I'm going to keep moving this. Now, now it's really getting tacky on the top level there. So that is basically, it took a while, but I found, okay, I think I'm at where I'm at. Now, I probably would have just been easier to do the larger sheets, and we're going to do that now. Let's see if this larger sheet works. I want to make sure I've got the right texture sh side pointed out here. There we go. So it, that glue is getting tacky. And now I think it's starting to do some of the things that I had hoped it would early on. And now I'm going to try and get this to have a little bit of a curl to it. I might even build up some glue. Oh, actually the glue seems to almost help to hold it in place. And I don't care if some of the glue actually gets again onto the to the water effects here. What I'm trying to do is make sure I have it be following that rounded shape. I might even take some of my water effects and put that in there too to hold it in place. Well, I've got time. It's I got plenty of time. Plus I can build this up more. So as as I mentioned, this could get a little crazy as far as having things stick. Oh, look at that. That sticks so much easier now. Well, I wish the I wish that first one was that easy. I wish that one would have been as easy as this one was. Okay. And what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to let these cure, no doubt. Because if I start adding water effects to this, that's just gonna be mayhem. What I am going to do though is cut this one much shorter or thinner. Cut that 
I've got it oriented the right way. I'm going to push this in a bit here. All right, so I'm going to let that stuff just sort of sit there in place. I see we've got our, our water there now. And because I want to use it to actually brace this thing, we're going to already we're going to break out some of the heavy gel here. I'm going to throw it out onto a there. Like you do. Just again, this piece of blister pack. That's all it is. I change my focus here. Change the focus there. And I just gotta see where I'm at here. Give me a second. And this, again, I'd rather it didn't mix with the APS glue, but Needs are as needs must. And that is, it's starting to hold that into the shape that I kind of need here. I don't know, maybe I'm going to have to put these, I might just put the water effects on here now. I don't know. We'll, we'll see here. You know what? I'm starting to think. Again, this is all experimentation. I haven't done this before. I'm thinking on the lower level, what I'm actually going to do is lead with the water effect stuff, even though it's not sticky. Yeah, see, once I get that stuck in there, it uh, doesn't move around. Okay, so that is... That's a new discovery. And it doesn't matter that we want this to be churned up anyway. So all of this stuff has to be churned up. Because water falling, obviously, we want it to be churned up. And I can still push it around here. Look at this. You can see it's just kind of... Sitting on top of our, yeah, that's what I, I'm going to do. That on the bottom half here. So, yeah, that is that is an interesting little lesson right there, and how to work with this stuff. Because I, I try to do things that I've never done before so that you guys don't have to figure things out the hard way. Let's get some of the interior with a little bit of this, again, some of this churned water onto it. like so and this will dry clear just like the just like the sheets did I will mess with this only so much here Now I'm going to do this on the, the top here as well because I'm hoping that that's going to help adhere it. So you can see we can sort of level this off. So I didn't worry about filling that section with water effects. 
And besides, there is a little bit of, there's water that's hitting this too, so this actually has to be churned up as well. It doesn't have to be flat. Don't actually want it to be flat. And, and now you won't see the, the seam. That's why I wasn't worried about the seam up top here. I just wanted to make sure that they, the sheets fell in a reasonable way. Now, they're not going to be, once I paint this stuff over on top of those sheets, they will look very different. They will look definitely very different. So there we go. That's okay. I'm just gonna move this around, kind of as I to see if it, I will just start to make this flow outwards a bit here. It can it's almost more like a wave, a ripple in the pond, as opposed to just a bunch of churned up stuff once it starts to work its way out here. Okay, and with the last couple of minutes here, I'm going to get my first layers onto this. And you can see, look at how that really sticks. That really sticks to that. See, we got a nice little on the top there. This is why I was not worried about the shape of the that piece of plastic, our armature. I just wanted it to be able to hold this stuff and not move. Now, I could have, in theory, put a bunch of little pieces of plastic down here. That would have been totally straight. And that that's another idea, too. I just didn't want to be gluing that much plastic there. I wanted to see if I could get, make the waterfall stuff work because, well, I, I really like doing the waterfalls. And I was hoping to do this more of a waterfall way. All right, now I've got to make sure that this starts to flow downwards. And then over the edge of this thing it just it needs to get covered anyways so might as well just have it run down here and see if we can really brush this down it starts to look like water rushing over this on the fountain here And it should probably head down this way too. And what we're going to have to do is I think we want to maybe let this stuff have a chance to solidify before we mess around down here. Because that could... Don't be hasty. If, we, if we're too hasty, we're just going to end up being disappointed. Yeah, there's plenty, plenty of other projects I'm sure you could work on instead of just pushing this. Now, sometimes I have to because, well, the video's just got to get done. All right, I think we've got ourselves a... And we can add more to that, too. It's just once it dries, we can add more can always add more. It's uh, pretty much impossible to take it away. Now here's where we're just going to do some ripples here. Just doing some ripples on this. And I'll do more as we get out towards the edge here. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself there. So yeah, I know there was a little bit of uh, comedic stuff going on as I was trying to get these things to stick, but um, that's kind of how it goes. It's also really tough to get it on camera. I couldn't get my hands exactly where I would probably have wanted those to be. But yeah, see, you can kind of see the depth that's emerging here now. Again, we'll just let these 
so-called waves start to dissipate as we work our way towards the edge here. The other reason I want this to dry, or at least cure, is that it'll be a little less white and shiny. I might just uh, blind the camera a wee bit less. So there we got that. Now again, this stuff here where it's a little bit on the bendy side or whatever, I can literally re-sculpt that with the the water effects and basically level it out and it'll just look level. So there you have it. There's your, your top level. It's got some water on it. We've got our, our spout over here. And what we'll do is we'll let all this kind of dry. And this will be our last thing right here, the, the bottom half of this. So we shall be back with that next. We've given our water effects a chance to dry here. And you can see nice and clear. We're going to put in a, what would you call it, a final detail segment. We'll put some more water on here. But as you can see, another thing happened is that these got a little bit more taut. I think uh, what it did shrink a little bit as it dried. You can see that, well, you can see that you can't see our little armature in there. It's just all clear, bubbly water which is really cool. I might throw a little bit more on there too. You could mix up some white with the paint. I've even seen white weathering powder mixed in with, well, the, the gel, any kind of water effects thing. It makes it look a little less like paint and more foamy, I think. Probably won't be doing that on this fountain. You can see how our waves, our little ripples here have dried. We'll do some more of that. I, again, I want to kill all of the Thing, but you can see, look at those leaves under the water. That's the really cool thing. Now, this is that sheet that we did in the one of the first segments. And look at this. Look at that. I mean, this is just night and day. Different. Look at how that just comes right off. So this is the thickness that is definitely better. Actually, I wouldn't even mind it being thicker than this. I, I could. De I could actually not mind if it was almost double the thickness of this too but that is you want to go this thick so way better than the other sheets that we had however I mentioned an experiment so another another blister pack here this is some relatively flexible blister pack material and what we did is that we cut a whole bunch of pieces of this I mean, you can see them. See those shinies down over here? And the idea, and we'll see if this works, we'll see if this works, is to actually try and glue these puppies in place. And that's going to form all of our little fountainy things here. Now, some of these I will have to just make adjustments to, minor little tweaks. Like this one was a little bit tall, so I'm just going to cut that a little bit. And... What I'm going to do first, though, is I'll get all of the water effects down in here because we want ripples down here, right? If I got all of these things sitting here, I can't get to the ripples. So that has to happen first. And I'm hoping that that'll be enough to hold the bottom ones in place. But I will have to do some super glue up here. I just that dot of super glue. And I'm hoping that is enough to hold it. And we're going to, well, we're going to find out if it works. I mean, that's, that's what we do here is we just play with stuff and see what the heck happens. So, I'm just going to throw out a cap over here, and I'm just going to see if I can't get a little bit of super glue onto this. There we go. All it takes just a little bit of super glue, like I said, because what can happen, I don't know if you've ever seen this, it, it will frost plastic. Of course, if it's a little bit frosted and well it won't be the worst thing in the world now these are all different widths part of it is i just couldn't necessarily cut them all the same length exactly or same width exactly but it's it's also going to look a little more natural i think so some are very thin some of them are very thick but first let's grab ourselves some kind of a larger brush here and we're going to I'm going to work in our water effects here. Again, the same Liquitex Heavy Gel. I'll make sure you can see it. I'm going to sneak my brush in there. And now we're just going to push this all across here. 
And when it dries, it's going to be just like these ripples, which is just the niftiest thing. So the, the first thing I'm doing here is really more of the ripples and, and less of the splashy part. That's a highly technical terrain term right there, the splashy part. Just kind of work in here in a little bit of a circular manner. And that's the one thing about when you work with this stuff is it it's hard to be it's hard to be patient right because you just you're, you're excited you want to see it finished right away you have to kind of take the slow go approach with this and then of course you gotta you gotta wait for it to actually then turn clear and there is always the those anxious moments as you're waiting for those to turn clear and the thicker the stuff is the longer you gotta wait so another thing that is if I was just doing this I've got to do with two of these fountains right I would take these two fountains I would try and do some other terrain pieces that also required water effects as many things like bases you name it I would line up as many things as possible that required what I'm doing right now and then just do those all at once and, and what you could do is then work gradually. You put thinner layers on each one because you're, you're working on a bunch of different things at once. You're going to see a lot of progress. You're going to make a lot of progress. So that is, well, I advocate that all the time, working on as many different projects as you can. For one thing, it keeps you from getting bored. It's real easy to get bored with projects, especially ones... I don't want to say that drag on for a while, but definitely projects that uh, are elaborate and have a lot going on. You can get bored with those. You really can. Now, the other thing, too, is once those, those pieces are in there, I can't really do much down here. So, huh, that's going to be important to get enough of my water effects here. Now, now I'm starting to think about the parts where there's some splashing here. And look at this. I'm just actually pulling up on the brush to make these things actually even a little bit higher. So the motion that I'm using is actually this. See what, what it looks like here? I'll hold it this way. I'm gonna spread this out. Look at this. Look, going like this. See how it's got those raised bits? That's what I'm doing down inside the this basin I know you just you can't really see it but with all of the the ripple effects in there now we're starting to get the this is that raised water now if this was a shallow enough fountain I could almost maybe raise it high enough to reach that other level but there's just no way that's gonna happen here definitely no way that's gonna happen it, it's a little too a little too tall All right, working my way around here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue a few of them in place, and then we're going to do the, hopefully, do the water effects around them. I might even add some more stuff onto my upper level here while we're waiting for just maybe that that super glue to set for just a bit. Go back almost all the way around here. I know it's hard to see, but I think we've got it. I think we have it now, or at least mostly. All right, put that down, and here, well, here goes nothing. Let's see if this works. Now I might even try some of those other the the stuff that I showed you. Here, let me just get a touch of super glue on there my new stuff that I made the thicker batch of waterfall stuff we might try that too all right now it doesn't necessarily have to be straight up and down it would be nice if it was
I'm just giving a little push here. <clears throat> I think you can see it. Yeah, this is a whole lot. Now, if I was just going to do a... Oh, wow, that really is... That's that's holding it in there pretty good. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's, that's not too shabby. It's holding it in there pretty nice. And the idea is that that'll kind of solidify a little bit faster. All right, let's do some more of these guys here. All right, now you could potentially do like every other one or, or leave yourself some gaps. I am going to work around this now. This one's going to be th thicker than the previous one. Yeah, that is okay. That is all. Oh, look at that. That is working quite nicely, and it's just because these things are stiffer, it's a lot easier to deal with them. So I'm going to go with a thinner one here, or a narrower one, I guess I'll say. Yeah, this is really fun. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. It's a lot easier to keep these things straight. It is way easier to deal with these things. Here's my. I'm just gonna push this thing around here. Yeah. See how e much easier that is to deal with than screwing around with the other ones. So, but thing is, the the ones that we did up here on the top, it would have been really difficult to manage that with the uh, with these pieces. These pieces just happen to work well with this fluted kind of fountain here. So this has to actually be. I have to cut off some of this. It's a little bit too tall. Let's do this again. Okay. Yep. So much easier. Very nice. Yeah, look at that. That's going to be nifty. I can't wait to see the water effects on that. Now, of course... Is I grab a little thinner one here. It might even just preemptively cut some of the top off. I hope I didn't cut that one too short. We're going to find out if I did. But I cut a bunch of these. And again, I don't want to take up the entire time here just doing this stuff. But it's certainly taken less time to do that than it was the... Oh, and look at that. We're just... Uh, we're getting some different widths here on our fountain -y type things. So I am I'm having fun with this. I, I hope it's not too repetitive. There's another one and I'm just I'm kind of dipping it into my little uh what would you say my active water down there. Yeah, look at look at how it just connects into that. So, as much as I would have liked to do it on the on the top piece, it just probably would not have worked. Now, where's our other? Now, on the other fountain here, the sheets are going to work a whole lot better. Cause look at that. I mean, this is kind of tailor made for the sheets. The this other one, well, hey, you you learn. Every time this is this is very new for me, and I'm sure I'm sure that probably most of you haven't done something like this either. Also, trying to find materials that we've got. I mean, that Liquitex Heavy Joe, you can get that anywhere, any Michaels craft store, whatever art store, you can find that stuff. You can get it on Amazon. That section last time I got it was on Amazon. So, and blister packs, we all have blister packs. Instead of having to buy, say, a special Woodland Scenic thing, now the UV resin, that, that's a different story. However, in theory, you could have used... You could have used the... Here, I'll just push this over here. 
what I'm using now. This this Liquitex Heavy Gel could have worked for the basins too. Would have been, uh, I think, a little bit trickier to try and fill in with, say, this nice glossy sheen. That would have been a little more difficult, I think. All right, I'm going to go with a thicker one here. And I'm just going to put down a couple more of these. The reason I'm still going with this is because I'm trying to let the super glue dry as much as I can and let the bottom part just get a bit more stable. So see, I just kind of dip that down in there and then we just position this guy here. Actually, might even just do that in the final details. Who knows? Who knows? I want to make sure... Now here's the other thing too, it, while I'm thinking about it, while I'm thinking, I'm going to actually maybe push a little bit of my water into these before they get basically blocked off by this part. Eventually they're all going to get blocked off and there's nothing you can do about it. But Oh yeah, that is so much easier so much easier I'll just I'm gonna keep going here till I run out of these and then what we'll do is in the in the final details segment we'll we'll put the we'll put our water effects on here because you're gonna have to I'm gonna have to let it dry anyway before you I can do the final photographs of it so why not just get as much of this done as I can and see what other things that we learn as I do this So we've got, again, the brush here. We'll push this into place. So we've got our cell. And yeah, you can see that's starting to frost up a little bit there on our plastic pieces. See that along the top edge there? Not unexpected. It's, again, it's, is it really that big a deal? Because a lot of you are going to be tempted to add that little bit of white paint or powder or whatever into it to make it look more like foaming water. So when we're about, we are now about halfway done. I, I only have so many of these. Now I might, as an experiment, just in, after I, I do these last couple here, what I might do is play around with my new water sheet that I made, the thicker one, and see how much of a pain it's going to be to do what we're doing now in such an easy and rapid fashion. Now, just as I say it's easy, this one wants to be a little bit stubborn, but boom, there you go. Got to make sure these things are vertical because by the time I reach the end of this, all of a sudden there's not going to be any more space for these these new my new little fountain pieces here so i definitely say minimal glue and i'm really glad i didn't have to put glue on the bottom section i really didn't want to have to do that yeah it just it's so much faster doing this okay so here's gonna be a thicker one we just did a thin one i'm gonna do a thicker one now and then i got one last piece that i can use one last piece after this one here, so just bear with me. All right, and here's our last one. Actually, no, I'm not going to put that one on there. I need something to as a measuring stick. So, because if I'm going to put my new, try my new stuff here. Where'd that go? Where did you go? And I think I can just use a scissors. Oh, yeah, I can just use the scissors on this stuff. Yeah, the other stuff here. Remember I was cutting that with a... I just cut that with the scissors. So this might work, too. Now, the other thing, too, is, well, we have to glue this on here. So that could be 
interesting. Now let's, let's make sure we get this to the right length. Like so. Okay, it's the right length. I'm just going to start cutting this up into some sections here. I'm just going to cut one here. And let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay, we've got it in position, and it's definitely wanting to stick to the tool here. So to me, just as much as I like this, yeah, I guess it's not the quite the right. I, but it does look neat. It has these bubbles on it, which are really cool. Except it's just kind of a pain to deal with here. So we can see as much as I like the look of this, and I would prefer this to the plastic sheets, one is definitely easier than the other. No doubt about it. Yep. No question. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep putting these around our edges, right? And then we're going to add some water effects in our final segment over this stuff right here. Okay, and maybe add a few more, like here, we're going to add a little more of our, you know what, let's just do it right now. Let's just do that right now while we're thinking about it. And you can see we're carrying that up the side of our, right up the side of our water effects here. Thinking about cascading water. Make it nice and choppy down here. Nice and choppy there. Have it go up the sides. Like so. Maybe to do some studying of, of water at waterfalls, water effects, uh, or just actual water, actual falling water. Because I've been studying those. Uh, some of my references, I'm realizing that the so-called falling water was actually just kind of painted in. Because there's some kind of basically sales photos for fountains. So that was, I didn't expect that, needless to say. Yeah, look at this. So now the edges of that look a little bit less like they were just, well, cut with the scissors. <laughs> and now it looks a little more like falling water. Let's get this going over the edge. Water over the edge, almost like a candle, right, where wax is sort of falling over the edge. Cascading down. And then as that dries, it turns clear. And what's really nifty is to have multiple layers of water effects. Multiple layers. It's the light kind of bounces off of each layer, and now it it just it gives it that much more of a watery appearance. I do have to make sure these are straight though. And you actually do want a brush that's not super smooth because you want these uneven things. Look at this. We're actually going to also have some water. Almost like icicles here coming down there, too. Instead of just, well, why does the water just mysteriously not flow in this one part of your fountain? What's going on with that? So we're just going to position some water here, and then we're just going to drag that down. It's real similar to what we do with the icicles. 
very similar. Now I'm going to have to wait a while for this to, to dry before I can un unfortunately take the final pictures. I'd love to just take them right now. But gonna let these things dry first, unfortunately. Yeah, see that edge is just all sharp and now that edge has a nice uneven look. We gotta do that to all of these guys, but it's another reason why I'm trying to let those dry for a bit. So they're not gonna be bouncing all over the place. The other thing I was hoping is that the the plastic would be a little bit more rigid and not move around the way this stuff is moving around. And so I'm just gonna even start pulling that up here too. And yeah, we're I think we're having some some success with this method. So, you know, it's not like this was horrible over here. It can be made to work. I might even do the rest of these like that. But for now, I am going to continue to add those little pieces to my bottom level here so that we can finish off our fountain next. So I've got all of my little little pieces in here and I found that this is so much easier the plastic blister pack a million times easier for that but here you could see we've added some more water effects onto these especially going after these edges here to make them look less like they were cut and we're gonna have to do a similar thing here now this is a little long in the tooth here so I'm actually gonna have to put out some fresher stuff it's almost like green stuff where you just sort of put out what you're gonna use I thought I was gonna need some more but Sometimes you just put out less and have to just keep putting out more. Now, when I'm doing the videos here, there's not a lot of time for me to keep going back and forth. So you can see here, we got some frosted flakes going on there. It's just, it is what it is. To me, it is it really that big a deal? Because I may still add, because, you know, that kind of looks neat there. Now, this is just going to dry clear. But it is sort of neat to have potentially a white foamy look to that as well. So I'm going to take some of my fresh stuff here. And we're just going to go right down over the edge like you do. And then here, now it's handy sort of to have the kind of thicker material because it's good for doing this. Let's get that all the way down. Make it. I didn't see it starts to look a little bit more like some kind of water flowing. And well, now we can just do that a whole bunch of times. A whole bunch of times. I won't have to worry so much about the other side of it because, well, you just can't see it. And it is a piece of terrain. Now, if this was a diorama or something like that, maybe you want to have a bit more in the way of perfection, I guess. And see, look at that. We're going to take the brush. We're going to push that stuff down. It, the whole idea is to make it uneven so that it doesn't look like just a, well, look at that piece of plastic blister there. And here we'll even make that, let's see, a little bit more uneven now. Just looks more, well, hopefully it just looks more like falling water. At least that's the goal. And uh, you know what, even if I have a little bit falling over the other edge too, well, that's just fine. That is just fine. Yeah, look at that. You can see I'm almost basically scraping the brush off onto the edge here. And it does a couple of things. It gets the big gunked up pile of water effects off of the brush, and it also then repositions it nicely on our little piece here. So see what those look like versus just those little sheets. And you've seen how clear they're going to dry, so yay for that too. See, I can even start to do multiple ones here. I can start to speed up the process. 
just wasn't quite sure what to expect. I really didn't know exactly what to expect. Now, ideally, maybe you give it a little bit more time for, say, the, the glue to dry. Oh, look at this. Nice little cascade right there. Yeah, that is... I'm just liking how that looks. Look at that. So it's nice to have this little balance of the the fresher material and the stuff that's been around for a while. Look at that. It just falls right over the edge. That is special. That is really very cool. So look at that. I can do a couple at once here. That yeah, it really starts to speed up. Once you kind of find a little bit of a thing that works, technique. And I'll probably develop this some more too. Uh, well, obviously, we're going to be doing the other fountain. And that's going to require our... I'm just going to save that other waterfall material for it. Well, I'm going to do a review for folks that haven't seen this episode before. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Just, And I can't wait to see this when it's, when it's all dry. That's really going to be cool too. I really can't wait for that. Now this one's here kind of pushed in a little bit. Can you see how there's a... Yeah, pushed in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is actually just pile up some more water there. And just make it look a little bit more even. I know that's kind of artificially done there. But again, terrain piece. Not a diorama. We're not being judged on it. Now, a terrain piece like this, obviously, just it takes a bit more time because we, there's some, there's a lot of moving, quite literally, there's a lot of moving parts. Oh, look at that. So see how I just built that up? Look at that. Look at that. We're already almost halfway through our, our line of things, and it's only been five minutes. There we go. Now this one, it's uh, <clears throat> this one's moving a little bit, so I gotta be careful. Gotta be careful if I sense some movement on these things. But we'll let that look. I just let it fall right over the edge there. Look at the big old bat. Now you can see why this is so good for making icicles. I mean, I already is starting to look a little bit icicle-esque there. Now, I don't want to make every single one of these super thick. I've got some thinner pieces here, but again, the idea is it's uh, it's kind of like candle wax. Oh, speaking of which, that's the other thing that this is good for. You can take like a piece of thin plastic tubing or whatever, and you can actually use this for sculpting candle wax. That kind of wax, it just sort of drips down the side. Yeah, so I think on some of the, because some of the RM printed terrain, they have some interiors on them. And maybe we'll do something with some candles in the interiors or, you know, torches on the walls. And we'll be using the same material. Look at this. Look at that. Nice. It, it's just kind of like these little blobs of water cascading down. And now they just don't look like pieces of blister pack anymore. You gotta love it when a plan comes together. Not that there was really a huge plan with this because the blister pack thing, that was not the original that wasn't the original goal for this. I wanted to use the, the waterfall stuff. I think because I was actually thinking of doing the other fountain first. Oh look at this. You can't even tell. I mean look at the difference between that and that. There's a huge, huge difference. You could add it some more up here too, and it depends. You know, after this, after I'm done with the filming process, maybe I'll add some more to it again. Yeah, look at how fast this is happening now. It's really starting to move along. Really moving along now, and we're getting some nice, real splashy things. Look at that! Look at that! Really nifty, splashy effects going on. Oh, let's get our next one here. and Now that one's moving again. So I'm going to really kind of anchor it as much as I can with some more material down here. 
It's just one where the, the stuff down towards the bottom didn't dry as much as I thought it did. Now these are going to be extra. These are those couple of ones here with the other materials. So I'm just going to maybe have to leave those. Might just have to let those just sit there for a little bit. So now you can see the difference between the plastic and the waterfall material there. Now this one's okay. The other one is just uh, wanting to be pesky. So we're just going to let those go. And we'll stick with our plastic ones here. Don't want to slow the slow the roll too much here. Now on some of these you can this one I didn't quite cut it short enough so I'm going to have to just pile up a little more on that part of it. That, that's okay cuz look at this I can just add a bit more here. I mean it's all supposed to be water falling over the edge anyways. See if I can't make a bigger. Just try and make that a little bigger little cascade over the edge there. Bring this down. Now I actually have a, a blob on the inside of it, which is actually that's kinda kinda neat. I'm not gonna try and get rid of that. I'll just leave it back there. But yeah, this one I'm not going to mess with that one too much because it's wanting to move around. So I can see that the thicker ones are a little bit more stable. They just had, there was more stuff for them to grab onto. So that's another, another little thing to consider as well. Now you could, in theory, so I'm going to just grab some water here. You can take some just regular water here. And you can sort of soften up if it's if it's starting to feel a little bit, I guess, if it's starting to get dry. You can reactivate it only to a degree, though, with water. Now, the one thing it's going to do is it is going to slide around more. But sometimes that's helpful because look at what it's doing there. So there are definitely multiple ways to use this stuff. I've thinned it down almost to practically like a water texture by itself just to again to do a different effect yeah, then I, there we go I just need that to kind of fall over the edge here hiding all of that straight texture And this one here, now it's not quite, well, water doesn't actually fall evenly either. But look at that, look what I just did. So I kind of scraped the brush on there, and now I'm going to move this up here. There, so again, uneven. Not looking like plastic at all. I might actually add a few butterflies to this. Some vellum butterflies. But that's not going to be in this video. I, I'll probably maybe film that as a Patreon video. It'll be a little short thing. But I've added yes, these vellum butterflies from Wicked Elf Miniatures. That could be interesting. I don't know if I have any birds. If I have some birds, I might... If I got some Reaper miniatures, little birds or something like that, I might throw those on here. That could be fun because birds like to hang around with I'm on fountains and drink out of them. If I had thought of that sooner, I might have tried to look for one. But again, I can always make that tutorial. Here, we're going to get some waves into this here. Have this cascade down over the edge constantly thinking about hiding that straight edge and literally just taking the brush you can see it's it's kind of swiping the paint uh, not paint the water effects off the brush and look we're almost on our last one and it's taken less than 15 minutes 
it, it kind of seems like a long time we've been working on this, but it's really not, and especially if you're working on other terrain pieces, which I actually was. I, I was working on other pieces as I was working on these two. Because you're not going to get your table done very fast if you need, at minimum, between scatter pieces and your, what would you say, mainline full pieces, you're going to need at least 10 to 12 pieces. And that, that's a combination of scattered terrain. And this could almost be considered scattered terrain instead of, say, feature terrain. Although this would be, I'm sure, probably a good objective style piece right here. I mean, it could literally be the, the white fountain or the fountain of Gondor. You, know, you got your fountain guard hanging out or the center of town doesn't matter what the game system is I'm just I'm using it for Lord of the Rings all of the RM studios or RM printed terrain sorry thinking of a different company that's all gonna be for my various Lord of the Rings terrain boards and I can do second layers here too look at that Actually, the more of this texture you have, the more there is to sort of grab onto. And then you can actually do more texture on that, like this. See, so the more texture you have, the more texture you can add. And this is uh, some of this stuff here, because it's thinner layers and not quite so thick, it's already starting to dry there too, which is nice. And by dry, I mean just turn clear. Yeah, this has been really fun here. So what I will do is I'm going to let all this stuff dry, get nice and clear. And then I'll take some pictures for you. And towards the closing credits, that's where some of your finished pictures are going to be. But as always, I want to say a, a thank you to the the patrons that support all of these videos, it means a lot because I wouldn't be able to do stuff like this. And I've at the end of this here, there'll be links to the Patreon page if you're not already subscribed to that, because I will be doing many, many more of these videos for the Patreon page in addition to the just the regular ones that show up on the YouTube channel. In any event, if you can do the whole like thing, that is helpful. That helps to keep the channel going because YouTube likes that. And you got to keep them happy. Look at my big old blobs of water here on the end of our waterfall. Well, I know I keep calling it a waterfall. It's not really a waterfall. But that's another tutorial that I'm working on. Actually, it's part of my basing series. And that is going to be a Patreon video, but I will continue doing these. We've got a ruined tower, and it's a tower. I mean, this thing's, I don't know if it's 24 inches tall, but it's tall, and it comes in multiple pieces, and we're going to be working on that, doing some weathering things on it, adding some other stuff. So there you have it. There you have it, folks. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks again for watching this, and I will catch you on the next, the very next Terrain Workshop, Episode 3. See you then.